Tonight on 999, the terrible dilemma of a couple trapped inside their burning car in the tiger enclosure of a safari park. And the man who fell out of a jet aircraft and lived to tell the tale. It's the dream of many flying enthusiasts to own their own jet. To private pilots, this jet provost is the Ferrari of the skies. It's owned by businessman Tom Maloney. He bought it from the RAF, where it was used for the basic training of their pilots. Within days of taking delivery of the jet, Tom offered to take his younger brother, Des, up for his first flight. It's an experience neither of them will ever forget. A flight which deepened the bond between them after the most bizarre accident. In this reconstruction, the two brothers are played by actors. Go around there. Yeah, no problem. Obviously, we were both excited about the prospect of flying. It was the first time we'd flown together in the aeroplane. It was a, an experience we were going to share. You comfortable? Yeah, it's quite small, isn't it? Good. Now look, we're going to make sure that you're strapped in. All right? It's very important, the safety aspect, and uh, I was very careful on that particular day, as I would be on any day, on briefing whoever the passenger was on, on the uh, safety procedures. So we spent probably 15, 20 minutes maybe going through all the systems on the aircraft, but particularly the abandoning procedures. The procedure basically was in two parts. Firstly, if you have to get out, then the canopy will be removed, and then you will jump out over the wing, which is uh, frightening but straightforward. And the second part is obviously you have to pull right. your manual ripcord. Um, what I have to do first of all is jettison the canopy, which is this lever down here. Yep. You don't touch that. That's when the plane was taken out of yeah. service with the RAF, what the ejector do do seats were disarmed. In an emergency, yeah. Des would have to free himself from his seat by pulling the release lever. And then once you're clear, you have to pull your deer in here. You're kidding. Hey, Ripple, no, I'm not. <laughs> Des is my baby brother, so uh, I've got to look after him. So make sure he knows what he's doing. It was a very bright day and uh, Desi was obviously very securely strapped in. You couldn't quite reach his sunglasses. I can't get my glasses, Tom. How do I undo this? No, don't worry about your glasses. I'm not taking that one off of you. Use your visor, OK? So he popped down the visor. That was the fortuitous thing to do. We finished the, the safety briefing and uh, all the pre-flight checks were done and we're ready to go. There was a small crowd of people waiting by the side of the aeroplane, including my girlfriend, Kay. And I remember sort of giving her the thumbs up and opening the power. And, off we went. Just as we were taxiing out to the uh, runway, the holding point, he once again said, Tom, where's my uh, ripcord? Where's that D-ring for the parachute again? Oh, it's down here. Don't worry. That was quite strange to me, because out of all the things going on inside this cockpit, this aeroplane, that was his only question. It was the one uh, part of the briefing I thought was particularly uh, relevant. If you can't find the ripcord, then um, you're in trouble. A jet is something special. You know, as I say, in jet noise is the sound of freedom. It's quite true, actually. It's a rush of air. It's, it's very smooth. We're flying along and uh, really enjoying the view. And it's, uh, the visibility from this particular aircraft is superb. And Desi was enjoying himself. Just take a look over the side down there. Amazing. It's amazing, isn't it? Do you want me to do a roll? Uh, if you must. Oh, here we go. During the roll, neither of them noticed that Desi's seat was working loose. <laughs> then Tom said to me, did you like that? And I said, uh, yeah, that's fine, I lied. And then we, then we did one to the left. And that's when um, things started to become uh, more real. I do another one. <laughs> the horizon moved. My seat started to uh, knock up and down. I knew instantly something was wrong. Yeah, there was a, a sort of like a crack. I actually caught my hand on the seat as it was passing through the canopy, instantaneously realising he had just fallen to his death. Mayday, mayday, mayday! Jeff Thomas! I was flying this aircraft, which really didn't particularly want to fly very well at the time, and I remember trying to regain control of the aeroplane, and it was upside down, and then the right way up. And pulled quite a lot of G trying to get back to the spot where he'd come out. My immediate feelings were that he was um, going to be killed because. He was still sitting in the chair. He would have been spinning around and around, and unless he could have remembered how to separate himself from the, the chair and then push the chair away physically and then go for his ripcord, he had a lot to remember. I was um, in a pretty bad way. I remember smashing my fist on the cockpit. 
but in the panel and screaming a bit. Um, but really just thinking, my God, he's just been killed. I spotted a disused airport and I really just wanted to get out of that aeroplane and I'm setting up for an approach, gear down, flaps down. My mind's thinking fast, what if I land there? There's nobody there. So if there's nobody there, I can't get to theirs. So I put on full power, raise the gear and continue towards uh, North Weald. I remember very well uh, the flight back. It was probably 15, 16 minutes and it was the longest time in my life. By coincidence, a BBC camera crew there filming another story captured the moment when Tom landed with the smashed cockpit clearly visible. They didn't really know what I was talking about. They hadn't really worked out what had gone wrong there. I just kept on saying, um, you know, Des is dead, you know, he's been killed. And uh, of course, you know, it's enormous shock. You couldn't believe that it could have happened. Um, but I just kept on repeating it over and over again. And then Kay came running up to me and you know, she hugged me and I'm just saying, Des, he's, you know, he's dead, he's dead. I don't remember going through the country as such. The first thing that hit me was the wind speed. It, it um, I think it knocked the wind out of me. It was very, very fast. There's lots of lights, lots of pressures from all different directions. Time is instant, you can't go back. And that's one of the things which occurred to me on the way down. You can't sit down and have a cup of tea and think about it. It's, it's, it's happening. It is very brutal. But somehow he got free of the seat. Somehow he managed to open the parachute. He was safe, but he didn't know about his brother. I landed quite heavily. I fell to my side, which is apparently the right thing to do. The first thing I felt was, OK, that went OK. Yeah, I'm down. I'm I did a 360-degree look to see where I was and where I should walk. There was civilization. And then people started to come over. A gentleman running. And I think he noticed that I was in a shocked state. So he took charge of the situation. Then the pain started to come on a little bit more. My brother could be dead. One person mentioned that they had seen something fall with a dark black object. There was no shoot. If that had been my brother, then there was only one conclusion to draw. And that is that the plane had gone down and my brother was probably dead. I was led away to a police car. It was a horrible experience sitting in the car you know waiting for news um, I'm really just expecting them to say on the radio you know we found his body in the field and uh, they just couldn't get any information out of the police for a while they were obviously trying to locate him and everybody was still rushing around trying to figure out what, what had gone wrong have you heard the news the aircraft this man fell out of has landed safely oh thank god is, is he all right yeah the pilot's perfectly okay oh. he was the first person the ambulance man with a radio, you actually knew the situation. And um, that was just great news because it's confirmed um, and your worst fears have been allayed. Golf Romeo 4 2. Golf Romeo 4 2, go ahead. Yeah, getting reports of an incident in the Colchester area. Um, somebody fallen from an airplane. Is he alive? It must yes, have been 45 minutes um, before. Uh, a call came through to say that it, actually he was alive, but he was severely injured. Oh, you can't be alive. I cope with it very badly. Um, you know, Des is my brother, and uh, he's my younger brother as well. It's my responsibility to look after him. Um, so I, 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 it was a very difficult period. You know, that, that drive to the, uh, the hospital lasted a long time. I had a tag around my wrist which said um, man has fallen out of the airplane at 3,000 feet. Um, the staff reacted in a kind of surprised way to that and also um, the other patients in the hospital. I think they found it quite amusing as well. Despite appearances, Des had suffered no serious injuries. <laughs> I said something like reports of my death are premature um, and that broke the ice and then uh, we just basically held each other. Listen, I thought you were dead. I just can't believe this. It was pretty, pretty amazing. I don't think I've ever kissed him before. <laughs> I don't think I probably ever will again. <laughs> Fine, though. I don't even Within know two I... days, Des was released from hospital. <laughs> I think there has been some good to come out of this. It, it does show that training, yeah. briefings are very important. He's got a sore neck. I Fortunately, uh, a lot of good things happened that saved him. Um, yeah. He separated from the seat. He did hit the tailplane of the aircraft on the way up. And, you know, there's a size 10 boot mark on the fin. 
um, but he didn't get knocked out. He couldn't reach his sunglasses, so he had the visor down. So as he penetrated the canopy, he, uh, he was protected by the visor, um, which helped a, a great deal. But most of all, though, his own coolness at the end of the day. It's changed my attitude to some things um, since. It makes you think in greater detail about other people. And obviously, um, that's all you had in the end. We've always been pretty close anyway, um, but we are now closer still. Um, he's not allowed to fly with me anymore. Next week, the accident he'd feared for 25 years. Only his wife could save him. And the error of judgment that left a student trapped in a swollen river. And that'll be at the later time, 9.30 next week.